watching on um, St. Patrick's Day Eve. Are you ready for it, Guillermo? I'm ready, Jimmy. What are you going to do for St. Patrick's Day? Uh, drink and eat. Drink and eat? Yes. What are you going to eat? You know the traditional foods? Uh, I'm just going to eat tacos and spaghetti. Tacos and spaghetti. That's it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Very Irish. <laughs> this will not be the usual beer-soaked parade St. Patrick's Day this year. The CDC is urging Americans to engage in virtual celebrations. In an official statement today, the CDC said they, quote, recommend all Americans stay home this St. Patrick's Day and get blackout drunk alone like real Irishmen. And <laughs> I, for one, am offended. I, but we must remain vigilant. The fear is that a fourth wave of the virus is coming. The White House is trying to get as many people vaccinated before the new, more contagious variants lead uh, to another surge. It's a really, it's a race against time and stupidity. People keep saying they're over the pandemic, which, you know, it's a virus. It's not words with friends. You can't just be over it. <laughs> Every expert says another wave can be prevented, and we can actually put an end to this if we're smart and wear masks. But the problem is we're not smart, and we don't wear masks. We're dumb. We're dumb people. It's interesting. I read the other day that among our many problems, the planet is facing a shortage of sand. There's a sand shortage because of demand for construction, which means we'll soon have nothing to stick our heads in. And <laughs> over at Fox News, where their nostrils are just full of sand, they are having a very hard time trying to convince us that Joe Biden's behind the wheel of a runaway truck or something. Tucker Carlson pulled a tired old rabbit out of his hood last night, going on and on about Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion at the Grammys on Sunday night. What do they consider art? That's the question. Well, we learned last night at the Grammy Awards. Here's a clip of the only portion we could play you. No more Dumbo. It's too filthy. Why, if this Elvis Presley keeps rotating his hips like that, Satan will impregnate our daughters. We've seen the destruction of American values, American principles. And it's terrifying. I think parents should be terrified that this is the direction that our society is heading towards. And again, we are weakening America. That's, that's really what we should be talking about. This is a weakening of American society. We are setting the stage, and it feels like we are looking at corrosion, like we are about to see the end of an empire. America cannot survive. It cannot be right. sustained under these sorts of values and principles. Right, right, right. Deadly attack on our nation's capital. Understandable. Two black women with a dirty pop song, the end of an empire. <laughs> they, I'm pretty sure they said the same thing about Madonna and George Michael in the 80s, but I guess they have nothing real to complain about. Even Marjorie Taylor Greene is running out of topics. Clan Mom was on Newsmax yesterday <laughs> where she sounded an alarm at the border. You see, the greatest thing about America is this country is the place everyone wants to be. And Joe Biden has ripped our borders open and invited over 100 different countries to come here. And that's exactly what they're finding. He's taken away all of Trump's strong border security executive order and now we even have terrorists possibly coming into our country. Terrorists and COVID, by the way. A lot of COVID, too. Oh, well, wait, I, I thought we didn't have to worry about COVID. I, now COVID is real? Well, I guess you two idiots should be wearing masks then, huh? Don Jr. is also workshopping some new Joe Biden material. DJ TJ is angry that Biden hasn't weighed in on the sexual misconduct allegations against New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, who is getting close to breaking Presidati's all-time record for sexual misconduct by an American politician. Your reaction to all of this? It's my... Listen, it doesn't surprise me. I wrote the book Liberal Privilege because that's exactly what this is. Joe Biden won't even comment on it. Didn't stop Joe Biden from commenting on Brett Kavanaugh or any other Republican that's been accused of these things. Joe Biden probably not the best person to talk about these things given his history of sniffing children, et cetera. But that's what it is. Sniffing, <laughs> sniffing children. Uh, we want to know what you are sniffing. That's what we want, would like to know. If I was you, Donnie, I'd stuff the word sniffing back into the family thesaurus. And then the prodigal son gave us a review of the work his father's conqueror has done so far. 
I think it's probably the most disastrous first 60 days uh, in the history of American politics and certainly the presidency. <laughs> okay, J all right. Name 10 presidents. Go ahead. <laughs> Please, sit. we'll wait. I'm working on a new game show for Donald Trump Jr. It's called Name 10 Presidents and Pee in This Cup. <laughs> Meanwhile, North Korea has no plans to make nice with the Biden administration soon. After a long period of silence, Kim Jong-un's sister, Chloe Jong-un, I mean, or is it Courtney? Courtney Jong-un <laughs> lashed out. She, wanted, she warned the Biden administration that if it wants peace, it had better, quote, refrain from causing a stink at its first step. Uh, we take this opportunity to warn the new U.S. administration trying hard to give off powder smell in our land. I'm sure it sounds more threatening in Korean, but... <laughs> It's funny, because North Korea thinks these statements they make are sick burns, but they always sound like riddles instead. It's like, if you wish to cross the bridge, be wise not to anger us, like the cat who swallowed mushrooms unwashed. It's, and it, by the way, it's rare that a dictator's sibling speaks out. I don't remember reading about any stern warnings from Lois Hitler, but President Biden has been trying to reach out to North Korea for weeks. Kim Jong-un isn't having it. I don't know if he's tried sending a love letter. I hear Kim is really into those, but we haven't heard much from Kim Jong-un at all since Trump left office. I, help, I really hope the little fella is okay. I wonder how he's doing. <laughs>
Oh, just a little over 650. 650 weddings. And what is your name? Mary Yu. Mary Yu. <laughs> so when you, when you do preside over a wedding, do you say, I marry you, marry you? <laughs> that, that's a good line that I might try. Oh, you haven't? <laughs> oh. Can marry you legally divorce you, too? Is that in your wheelhouse? <laughs> oh, we judges have a lot of power. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, would you say this name has been a, a, a good thing for you or a nuisance? No, it's been wonderful. And I just have to say, Jimmy, you know, having this name actually gave me the opportunity to preside over the first same-sex marriage in the state of Washington. Oh, People wow. Think... That's a pretty big deal. Wow. <laughs> Do you have any siblings? Uh, is there an F, maybe a, a kill? <laughs> <laughs> I have one lovely sibling with the right name. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much, Mary. It was nice to meet you. That's Mary Yu, everyone. And next, we, we journey all the way to Surrey, England, to meet a nutritionist and a vegetarian cookbook author. Um, hello there. I will ask you first, how long have you been working in the field of nutrition? I've been a nutritionist for over 30 years, about 36 years. You are a longtime nutritionist. You are a vegetarian. What are some of your favorite vegetarian foods? Oh, I love, I do cook a lot with beans, uh, garbanzo beans. I love them all. I love lima beans. I cook with black beans. I make bean burgers. I make chickpea stews. Um, so, yeah, I do a lot of cooking with beans and lentils. I noticed you mentioned garbanzo beans and chickpeas. Aren't they the same thing? They're exactly the same thing, Jimmy. Thank you. <laughs> now, it's time to reveal your name. Go ahead. My name's Anita Bean. <laughs> Anita Bean. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a Mr. Bean? Yeah, definitely. Any Beanie Babies? No, I'm, I'm married. I'm married, I'm married to Simon Bean, and I've got two beautiful daughters. Their names are Chloe and Lucy Bean. Chloe and Lucy Bean, wow. Yeah, yeah. Anita really could, it's a risky name to give a Well, I guess you know it, the last name, but yeah, it's a risky name to give a girl who might one day, like you could have married Andy Dick and it would have been a problem. <laughs> I mean, not just because of the last name either. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for staying up so late, Anita. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, thanks for having me on. And thanks for being on. Go crack a window. We go next to Jackson, Georgia, to say hello to a correctional officer in Jackson. Hello there. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Jimmy? I'm doing well. How are things in Jackson right now? Uh, cold and wet. Cold yes. and wet. We're, yes, we're experiencing some wet weather all day. Now, your job, I think we got a clue as to what you do based on your uniform. You are yes. a, oh, and also the words are right up there on the screen. You're a correctional <laughs> officer. <laughs> I'm not too bright. And where do you do your correctional officering? Uh, right here in Jackson. I am a sergeant over our uh, high max facility here in Georgia. Oh, that's got to, you must see some crazy stuff there, huh? You would not believe. Uh, I would like like three hours of your time to get in here. I really would. No problem, Jimmy. No problem. <laughs> and would you be so kind as to share your name with everyone? My name is Sergeant Robin Banks. Robin Banks. <laughs> is that, are you married, Robin? I am. Yes, I am. What was your maiden uh, name? My maiden name was Wine Glass. Wine glass. Yes. <laughs> that would have been a good name for Anita. Anita wine glass, right? I need a wine glass every day. Yes, yes, Jimmy. Every do you, day. Do you ever have problems like when you're trying to make a withdrawal? Well, not normally because when I'm in public, I'm usually armed. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, but, so normally I don't have a problem. You know? <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Sergeant. Sergeant Robin Banks, thank you. And last but not least, we, we go to Austin, Texas to meet a retired urologist, which I'm already excited about this. 
<laughs> now, how long did you work as a, a urologist? Well, Jimmy, first of all, thanks for having me on. This is, yeah. this is really great fun. So um, I've been in Austin, Texas for 37 years, y'all. 37 yeah. years? Yeah. And, yeah. and as a urologist, you had a particular specialty, correct? Well, yeah, I was actually trained in urologic oncology, but uh, since being in Austin, I've become the vasectomy machine. The and vasectomy after 16, machine. After 16,000 vasectomies plus. Wow. Uh, I think I've earned the honor. Wow, yeah, you yeah, have had a, handled a lot of penises. And uh, may I ask, <laughs> what is your name, doctor? My name is Dr. Dick Chop. I earned that name, so. Yeah. And, and never once did you think maybe I'll go with Richard, huh? Well, you know, that's my real name, but uh, everybody calls me Dick now, so that's the way they, whether they like me or not, you know? Uh, please tell me you have a son named Karate. I don't, I don't. Wow. And does this scare your patients ever when you come in and Dick Chop shows up at the door? Well, not really. You know, most of them come in to uh, see me for their vasectomies. And uh, yeah. all the, the past 20 years, all the gentlemen that come in uh, get a T-shirt oh. that says, I've been chopped at Urology Austin. <laughs> and so it, it, it's a good marketing tool. Yeah. Fun. Great fun. Has, and has this been good for your business overall? Being named oh, Dick Chop. Yeah, certainly. You know, yeah. certainly. The interesting thing is I retired in December of 2020. And in the, and in the month prior to my retirement, guys were coming out of the woodwork to come in and get their vasectomies by yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> in retrospect, I think a lot of them just wanted the T-shirt. Yeah, right. Yeah, sure. That's I would love one of those. Well, yeah. thank you, Dr. Yeah. Shop. <laughs> my pleasure. Give our best to pork. Thanks to all of our perfectly named people. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. I hope you enjoyed that video. Hit subscribe and all your dreams will come true, assuming your dreams are to watch more YouTube videos.